Modern Combat Aviation A New Era of Air Superiority The two full-scale wars that erupted just a year apart, the Russian-Ukrainian conflict and the Arab-Israeli War, have vividly underscored the paramount importance of combat aviation. The Ukrainian counteroffensive, aimed at liberating the southern territories seized by Russia, including Crimea, was stymied primarily due to a lack of air superiority. This failure has cemented Russia's dominant position in the Black Sea. Conversely, the world watched as the Israeli Air Force demonstrated overwhelming effectiveness in real time, with their fighter jets, emblazoned with the Star of David, relentlessly bombing the Gaza Strip. The lack of air power and air defense in Gaza made even the nearly 50-year-old F-15s, formidable opponents with no defense. However, the dynamics could shift dramatically if Iran, equipped with modern air defense systems such as the Russian S-300 PMU-2 and Tor M-1, decides to support the Palestinians. Recently, Iran announced an agreement with Russia to purchase Su-35 fighters, advanced 4++ generation aircraft. This development raises crucial questions. How will Israel respond? Can Western aircraft effectively counter Russian, Chinese, and Iranian weapons? The West's arsenal, F-35 Lightning II and its limitations. When discussing modern Western combat aircraft, the F-35 Lightning II inevitably comes to mind. This fifth-generation fighter has become the backbone of the US, NATO, and Israeli Air Forces. It represents a pinnacle of modern technology, featuring stealth capabilities and a versatile arsenal of air-to-air -air and air-to-surface missiles and guided bombs. But is the F-35 enough to guarantee air dominance? Unfortunately, the answer is no. Despite its advanced features, the F-35 has notable limitations. Its maximum speed in afterburner mode is 1930 km per hour, Mach 1.6, which is relatively slow. Without afterburner, it is a subsonic aircraft. In contrast, the Russian Su-35 can reach speeds of Mach 2.3 and Mach 1.1 without afterburner. Moreover, Russian and Chinese fifth-generation fighters, although fewer in number, combined with their fourth-generation counterparts, present a formidable challenge to American aircraft. This threat is amplified by sophisticated air defense systems like Russia's S-400 and the state-of-the-art S-500 which are believed to detect stealth aircraft before they can engage. Enter the next generation, the NGAD program. So, how will the US counter these evolving threats? The answer lies in the development of sixth-generation fighter jets under the Next Generation Air Dominance NGAD, program. Major US aircraft manufacturers, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman, are spearheading this initiative. Although Northrop Grumman officially announced its withdrawal from the NGAD program on July 27, 2023, development continues at a brisk pace. The capabilities of the NGAD aircraft can be inferred from the State Route 72 project by Lockheed Martin. Aviation enthusiasts will recognize the SR-72's name as a homage to the legendary State Route 71 Blackbird. The State Route 71, built in 1964 by Lockheed Martin, was a high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft that posed a significant challenge to Soviet air defenses. It was deployed in every major conflict from the Vietnam War to the Yugoslav conflict in 1998, frequently penetrating Soviet and Russian airspace without ever being shot down. The State Route 71 could cruise at an altitude of 24 km and reach speeds of Mach 3.3, over 4,000 km per hour, extraordinary even by today's standards. In the air defense system of the USSR, the State Route 71 was considered the strongest enemy. Combat work was conducted primarily against it, other air targets were temporarily ignored. According to the instructions, after the capture of the target, the State Route 71 was escorted only manually as the aircraft had onboard effective means of electronic warfare and actively used them during combat operations. It's not surprising, therefore, that Lockheed Martin developing the sixth-generation fighter took the Blackbird as a basis. First of all, the company is going to significantly increase the speed of the new airplane compared to the already fantastic performance of the State Route 71. To fly at even higher speed, the new State Route 72 airplane is planned to be equipped with a GPVRD hypersonic direct-flow air jet engine, which uses a special mixture of super-compressed air and fuel. 
The combustion of this mixture will allow the airplane to fly at hypersonic speeds of Mach 6 that's 7,350 km per hour or 4,570 miles per hour. But first we'll have to overcome several technical difficulties associated with the project. Since the GPVRD uses super compressed air, it's not adapted for low speed flight. To solve this problem, Lockheed designers are going to use two jet engines equipped with a common air intake. The first of them is quite a conventional jet engine. There are plans to use the technology of the experimental combat unit Falcon 2 as a jet engine. It will be used from the moment the airplane takes off until it reaches a speed of Mach 3. From that airspeed onwards, the airplane will transition to flight using the GPWR. However, the biggest difference from its predecessor will not be this, but the fact that the State Route 72 reconnaissance aircraft can be used without a pilot. Currently, two variants of the aircraft are being considered, unmanned and manned. At the same time, the aircraft will be able to carry a set of offensive weapons. It's mainly about the new lightweight missiles, as when launched at a speed of Mach 6, they will not need to accelerate and therefore weigh their stuffing. One of the objectives of the new State Route 72 hypersonic aircraft will not only be to provide the US with the necessary intelligence information, but also to increase the military strength of the state. According to the head of the hypersonics program, Brad Leland, hypersonic aircraft with hypersonic missiles will be able to penetrate the airspace close to flights of the likely enemy and strike missile strikes in any part of the continent, flying to the destination in less than one hour. According to the specialist, it's speed that should become the next key indicator in the whole world's new generation aviation. Speed will remain a priority for the next few decades. Leland believes that these technologies will be a game changer, requiring a change in the rules of the game, as the mass introduction of stealth-type technologies once was. Indeed, why should an airplane be invisible if neither air defense missiles nor air-to-air -air missiles can catch up with it? According to Bradley Lynn, the State Route 72, at a speed of Mach 6, will be able to leave potential US adversaries not only a minimum of time to retaliate, but also surprise them with high efficiency in the use of hypersonic missiles. Since their launch will not require a carrier rocket, the speed of such missiles can be six times the speed of sound, and the design of missiles will be much lighter. And not only in terms of weight, but also in terms of the very structure of the rocket. The heart of the new airplane should be, as it's called in Lockheed, a turbine based on a combined cycle of operation. It'll combine the engine technology of the hypersonic aircraft HTV-2, which could reach a speed of Mach 20 which is an incredible 24,500 km per hour or 15,220 miles per hour during the tests. It's being reported that the State Route 72 will get two engines, each of which will essentially be a twin engine. Each engine will utilize a rather complex combined design consisting of a nozzle and air intakes connected to two different power sources to achieve a significant reduction in air drag. Lockheed and Aerojet Rocketdyne spent a full seven years working together on the design of the future engines and their appearance. As part of the work on this project, the engineers of the two companies have repeatedly racked their brains to find a suitable solution. In an interview with the famous weekly Aviation Week, Brad Leland explained that the retirement of the Blackbird left a rather impressive gap in the development of satellite technology. We're talking about hardware not television technology as well as subsonic unmanned and manned systems. The development of the new State Route 72 hypersonic aircraft is designed to close this gap. The journal article reports that one of the conditions for the creation of the State Route 72 is to take into account the requirements of the U.S. Department of Defense as part of weapons development and research programs. These requirements largely dictate to Lockheed engineers various aspects of the project and its timing. According to Leland, Building the State Route 72 will not require the creation of fundamentally new technologies. This multi-role aircraft is scheduled to enter service by 2030. The future State Route 72 airplane already has an addition to the name as is customary for all airplanes. If the State Route 71 is the Blackbird, then the State Route 72 is the Dark Star. It was on the State Route 72 Dark Star that Tom Cruise's hero, Captain Peter Maverick Mitchell in the movie Top Gun Maverick, accelerated to speeds of Mach 10 for about 12,250 km an hour or 7,600 miles per hour. Who knows, maybe the real state Route 72 will be able to break Mach 10. We'll just have to wait until 2030.
And let's finish our video where it started, with Israel. It's no secret that this country does not develop its own airplanes but buys them from the USA. This was the case with the F-15, the F-16 and the F-35. Taking advantage of the presence of a lot of talented engineers and scientists, in Israel devoted an aircraft significantly improves. Israeli modifications are recognized by many experts as the most advanced. The latest aircraft handed over the F-35 was no exception. In Israel, it was modernized to the F-35 Adir. It's called Adir, which means mighty in Hebrew. We're sure that the same story will happen with the State Route 72, it'd be even better. On that optimistic note, we end our video. Thanks for watching. Tell us what you think about what you watched in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell not to miss new videos about modern weaponry. We hope you have a great day and we'll see you again soon.